Hello everyone, I'm here with my next video. This is on the chapter The Hitchhiker by Roald Dahl. We have the whole lesson over here, the whole story is over here. I'll keep reading and I'll keep explaining alongside so that you are able to understand the whole story well. The story is very interesting and full of suspense and I'm sure you will definitely enjoy. So let us start. I had a new car. It was a big BMW. It had a top speed of 129 miles per hour and terrific acceleration. The body was pale blue. The seats inside were dark blue and they were made of leather of the finest quality. The windows were electrically operated and so was the sun roof. The radio aerial popped up when I switched on the radio and disappeared when I switched it off. The powerful engine growled and grunted impatiently at slow speeds but at 60 miles an hour the growling stopped and the motor began to purr with pleasure. So here the narrator is very proud of his BMW car that he owns. He has this new car. It's a BMW blue color car as we all can see the picture. And it has a top speed of 129 miles per hour. MPH means miles per hour. And it has a very good pickup. The seats inside are of dark blue color and they are made of leather which is of a very good quality. Everything is automatically operated. The windows and the sunroof. The radio aerial is also comes out, pops out means it comes out when it is when the radio is switched on and whenever we switch off the radio it uh, goes in. The powerful engine of the car you know it when you drive the car at 60 miles an hour it goes very smoothly you know when you drive it slow then it makes a growling and grunting sound. So the narrator is really very proud to own this BMW. I was driving up to London by myself. It was a lovely June day. They were hay making in the fields and there were buttercups along both sides of the road. I was driving along at 70 miles per hour, leaning back comfortably in my seat. Ahead of me, I saw a man thumbing a lift. I touched the brake and brought the car to a stop beside him. I always stopped for hitchhikers. I knew just how it used to feel to be standing on the side of a country road watching the cars go by. I hated the drivers for pretending they didn't see me, especially the ones in big cars with three empty seats. So the narrator was driving his BMW car. He was going to London. It was a June day and a very pleasant day. Everything was very nice. The animals and all the insects, everyone was enjoying the beautiful buttercups on both sides of the road. They were looking very beautiful. And he was driving at 70 miles per hour leaning very comfortably it was a smooth drive and he was very happy when at once he saw a man uh, thumbing his lift thumbing his uh, you know thumb for lift he was putting his hand out he wanted lift and uh, hitchhikers are actually the people who uh, take lift without paying anything so they hitch a car or they take a lift and uh, our narrator was very sympathetic towards the uh, hitchhikers because he exactly knew he had himself experienced because when he was young he too had once you know he too must have been a hitchhiker and he hated the drivers who with empty cars pretended not to see these hitchhikers and they used to drive pass by these hitchhikers so he was an experienced man in this uh, way so he usually he says he always stopped for all the hitchhikers the hitchhiker poked his head through the open window and said going to london governor 
Yes, I said, jump in. He got in and I drove off. He was a small, ratty-faced man with grey teeth. His eyes were dark and quick and clever like rat's eyes and his ears were slightly pointed at the top. He had a cloth cap on his head and he was wearing a greyish coloured jacket with enormous pockets. The grey jacket together with his quick eyes and the pointed ears made him look more than anything like some sort of a huge human rat. So it happened that when he saw this man thumbing or asking for lift, as we can see in the picture below, our narrator stopped the car and the hitchhiker asked him whether he was going to London. Here, governor, we can also refer to as sir. We usually call with respect when you address someone, you can uh, either say sir or governor. So the narrator said he was going there and he asked him to jump in or to sit in the car quickly. So the hitchhiker sat down and the narrator noticed that the hitchhiker's face and whole appearance looked like a huge human rat. He had small ratty faced, uh, he was a small ratty faced man with grey teeth. His eyes were very dark and very quick and clever, you know. As you have seen a rat's eyes, you know, they are always hiding and they are very alert. Whenever you see a mouse or a rat enter your house, they have very quick movement of the eyes. They quickly see where they have to go, what they can find and where they have to hide so that they are not seen by anyone. So he just had the same type of appearance. He was wearing a cloth cap on his head and a grey colour jacket with big pockets. The grey jacket along with you know his quick eyes, the quick movement of the eyes and the pointed ears you know just made him look like a huge human rat. Let's see what happens further. What part of London are you headed for? I asked him. I'm going right through London and out the other side. He said I'm going to Epsom. I said I wish I were going with you. I love betting on horses. I never bet on horses, he said. I don't even watch them run. That's a stupid, silly business. Then why do you go? I asked. So when the hitchhiker sat down beside our narrator, the narrator asked him where in London was he actually going? So the hitchhiker, the person who had taken the lift, uh, he answered that he was going to Epsom. So Epsom was a place where uh, there were a lot of, uh, you know, uh, horse race. It was a horse race area where uh, horse races took place. So our narrator thought that this person was going to watch the horses run and to see the race. So when he asked, the hitchhiker answered that he never bet on horses. He never put money on horses or never gambled uh, on any horse or never bet on it on them and he thought that it was a stupid silly business and so our narrator was absolutely surprised and asked him as to why exactly then he went there then <coughs> he didn't seem to like that question his little ratty face went absolutely blank and he sat there staring straight ahead at the road saying nothing there was a long silence. I decided not to question him anymore. I'm sorry, I said. It's none of my business what you do. The trouble is, I am a writer and most writers are terribly nosy. So it so happened that when our narrator asked the hitchhiker as to why he went to the Epsom if he did not bet on the horse races, the hitchhiker did not answer and he kept looking straight at the road and the narrator understood that he didn't seem to like the question and did not wa want to answer it back. So for some time there was a pause between the two, no one talked and then you know uh, the narrator decided not to ask him anymore and in fact he apologized. He said sorry and uh, that uh, he should not 
have asked you know what is uh, what and why he went there and what he did there uh, so you know he said he explained by telling that he was actually a writer and writers are terribly nosy you know nosy means a lot of you know they interfere a lot they want to know everything curious about different types of things and different types of people so he explained by telling this you write books he asked yes writing books is okay he said it's what i call the skill trade i'm in a skill trade too the folks i despise is them that spend all their lives doing crummy old routine jobs with no skill in them at all you see what i mean yes the secret of life he said is to become very very good at something that's very very hard to do like you i said exactly you and me both what makes you think that i am any good at my job i asked there's an awful lot of bad writers around you wouldn't be driving about in a car like this if you weren't no good at it he answered so the when the hitchhiker comes to know that our narrator was a writer he said that writing books was okay because it was a skilled trade it was you know uh, it is a skill to write and write stories or write poems it is definitely a self made skill self developed skill so that the hitchhiker appreciated it his being a writer and he said that he hated he despised he said the folk side despise that is the people he hated were the people who spend lives doing routine jobs without having any skill there are people you know who go to office every day who come back they do the same type of jobs every day uh, filling files and doing you know the same type of work so he says that he appreciated people who this is the hitchhiker's words actually the hitchhiker said that he appreciated people who had some sort of skill and they uh, followed a skilled trait you see what i mean and then he says you know did you understand what i want to say and then he says that the secret of life is to be good at something and one should be good at the thing which is very difficult to achieve or very difficult to do so then he says that uh, so when the poet, uh, the writer comes to know about his uh, opinion and he says all right it is like you then so then the hitchhiker says you and me both so the narrator you know then questions him and says that how do you know that i am a good writer or i am good at my job uh, because there are many writers who know, you know who uh, seem to write a lot but they their things are not published they are not successful writers so you know he says that uh, i can see it by the car that you are owning uh, if you weren't good then you wouldn't be uh, owning a bmw car which is a very uh, luxurious and expensive car let's go further it wasn't cheap what can she do flat out he asked 129 miles per hour i told him i'll bet she won't do it i'll bet she will so just see the conversation the narrator starts by saying that it wasn't cheap that means the car was actually very difficult and uh, uh, to achieve you know to own because uh, owning a specially this type of a car an expensive luxurious car means that you need to work a lot to earn a lot of money so he says it wasn't cheap and then when the narrator asks him that what was its speed what can she do flat out means how fast can it run what could its uh, speed be so then our narrator answers that it was 129 miles per hour so then he says i'll bet she won't do these are the words of the hitchhiker which is answered by the narrator's words and he says i'll bet she will that she can run 129 miles per hour open up open her up so here apostrophe is for h open her up then and prove it he said i pressed my foot hard down on the accelerator the big car leaped forward as though she had been stung lovely he cried beautiful keep going 
we flashed past several cars as though they were standing still. A hundred and forty my passengers shouted, jumping up and down, go on, go on. At that moment, I heard the scream of a police siren. It was so loud it seemed to be right inside the car and then a cop on a motorcycle loomed up alongside us on the inside lane and went past us and raised a hand for us to stop. So when, uh, you know, to prove that his car ran actually 129 miles an hour, the narrator pressed the accelerator to drive it very, very uh, speedily and the hitchhiker really enjoyed and he said it was lovely it was beautiful and he wanted the narrator to keep going on at this same speed in fact increasing it more and uh, it was then you know when they both noticed that they had uh, flashed by ran fast dro drove fast you know uh, driven fast all so many cars that seemed to stand still because if one car is going fast you feel the other car was standing and uh, the Passenger, passenger here is for the hitchhiker. He noticed that the key, the needle went up to 120, you know, miles and he was really very excited and he kept jumping up and down and kept saying go on, go on uh, because he wanted, he was really enjoying the drive when suddenly, you know, the police siren, the police siren uh, was seen, uh, was heard and it's it was so loud that it seemed it was coming right inside uh, the car. And at that moment only they noticed a cop that is a policeman coming fast on his motorcycle and uh, you know he gestured them by raising a hand to stop. So let us see now what happens. Finally he pulled to the side of the road and I pulled in behind him. The cop got off his motorcycle and leaned the machine sideways onto its prop stand. Then he took off his gloves and placed them carefully on the seat. He was in no hurry now. This is real trouble, I said. I don't like it one little bit. Don't talk to him more than is necessary. You understand, my companion said. So what happened was when the policeman, when the cop, the cop is a policeman, gestured them to stop the car. Uh, they, he also stopped his bike right in front of them and he, uh, you know, he uh, made his motorcycle stand on the stand, on the prop stand that was there. He, uh, and he took out his gloves, placed, him, placed them on the seat of the bike and then he uh, start, uh, started moving towards these two people, that is our narrator and the hitchhiker. So seeing this policeman come here was not liked by the narrator and he said this is real trouble and he didn't like this sort of stress and tension. So the companion that is the hitchhiker who was sitting right beside our narrator uh, gave him a suggestion to not to talk uh, more with this person, not to talk unnecessarily, just give the only important information. So let us see now what the policeman questions. Like an executioner, approaching his victim, the cop came strolling slowly towards us. He was a big man with a belly. His goggles were pulled up onto the helmet, showing a smoldering white face with red cheeks. We sat there like guilty schoolboys waiting for him to arrive. Watch out for this man, my passenger whispered. He looks mean as the devil. The cop came around to my open window and placed one meaty hand on the sill. What's the hurry? He said. No hurry, officer, I answered. So then the policeman was seen coming, walking towards these two people. And he just seemed like an executioner who was approaching towards the victim to hang him or to execute him for the crime that he had done. The policeman, that is the cop, came strolling slowly. You know, he came very slowly. He kept walking towards them. He was a big man with a big stomach, big belly. All right. And his goggles were there, pulled up on top of the helmet that he was wearing. And he had white face with red cheeks. 
and these two people you know like guilty school boys when are uh, when the school children are caught doing something wrong and uh, the head of that thing or some authoritative person is walking towards them the guilt that comes into the children it was same uh, you know experience that these two were experiencing and uh, you know they uh, the narrator's companion that is the hitchhiker told him warned him to watch out for that man because he really looked like a devil so this policeman came he kept his hand on his on the sill of the car and looked through the window and talked to the narrator and asked him why was he in a hurry why was his car in such a great speed so the narrator answered that he was in no hurry so then let's see what happens in that case he said you have got yourself into a nasty mess haven't you do you know what the speed limit is in this country 70 i said and do you mind telling me exactly what speed you were doing just now i shrugged and didn't say anything when he spoke next he raised his voice so loud that i jumped 120 miles per hour he barked that's 50 miles an hour over the limit then he turned back again and stared hard at my passenger and who are you he asked sharply he's a hitchhiker i said i'm giving him a lift i didn't ask you he said i asked him have i done something wrong my passenger asked his voice was soft and oily as hair cream so then when the cop or the policeman asked our narrator why was he in a hurry and the narrator answered that there was no hurry he was not in not in hurry so then the policeman told him that in that case if he was not in hurry he uh, was into a great trouble nasty mess means you are now into great trouble and then he asked what the speed limit was there in their country the driving speed limit and so the narrator answered that it was 70 miles an hour and then you know the policeman got really angry and he said if you know that it is 70 then uh, what speed were you in so the you know he our narrator was actually very scared and he just shrugged his shoulders and did not answer anything when uh, the cop saw this he really got very angry and shouted back at him he barked at him that means he shouted back at him in great anger and fury and told that he was on in one uh, his the car speed was 120 miles per hour that was 50 more because only 70 was allowed so you know he was really very furious and then he looked hard at uh, the passenger sitting beside passenger is the hitchhiker the person who was sitting beside a narrator and asked him as to who he was and uh, you know he uh, our narrator actually answered back and said that he was giving a lift and he was just a hitchhiker to which you know the cop really got very angry and said i didn't ask you and so you know our passenger that is the hitchhiker in a very soft and oily way you know very softly and very nicely as if you know he was flattering and showing his innocence said have i done something wrong so let's see then what happens that's more than likely the cop answered anyway you are a witness i'll deal with you in a minute driver's license he snapped holding out his hand i gave him my driver's license he brought out the dreaded book of tickets carefully he copied the name and address from my license then he gave it back to me now you he said to the passenger and he walked around to the other side of the car from the other breast pocket he produced a small book black notebook name he snapped michael fish my passenger said so you know very innocently where our hitchhiker asked him have i done something wrong so you know he said that that's more likely because you are a witness you were there in the car when this person was driving the car at 120 mile per hour so you know he said all right but i'll deal with you in a minute 
and then he turned back to our narrator and asked for his driving license our narrator took out and gave him the driving license and quickly you know he took out the book of tickets that is the book of chalan and he copied the name and address from the license onto his chalan book and then gave it back to the narrator and then he walked around and went to the passenger's car that is hitchhiker's window and asked him his name he took out a black notebook uh, a small diary or a notebook and noted down his name and when he was asked for his name the hitchhiker said that he was michael fish what's your job he asked sharply i'm an odd carrier a what an odd carrier spell it h o d c a that will do and what's the, a hot carrier may i ask an odd carrier officer is a person who carries the cement up the ladder to the brick layer and the hod is what he carries it in it's got a long handle and on top you have got bit of wood set at an angle all right all right who's your employer don't have any i am unemployed so you know when he notes down his name as michael fish he asked him what job he does so our hitchhiker answered that he was a hot carrier and the way you know the accent in which he talks he doesn't spell the h out and so the cop or the policeman doesn't come to know and so uh, he asked him to spell the word and uh, when he comes to know that it is a hot carrier so he asks what a hot carrier is and what his job is so our narrate our uh, hitchhiker explains that a hot carrier was a person who carries who carried cement up the ladder to the brick layer where the building was being made and uh, a hod was what he carries it in uh, it is a long handle with lots of you know bits of wood where you uh, at sep at you know different angles where you can take different types of things and carry them up wherever the construction was going on and i have a picture in the next page so we can see that in the next page so you know when the cop comes to know he asks uh who his employer was when uh, to which the the hitchhiker says that he was right now he did not have any employer and he was unemployed the cop wrote all this down in the black notebook then he returned the book to its pocket and did up the button when i get back to the station i'm going to do a little checking up on you he said to my passenger me what have i done the rat faced man asked I don't like your face that's all the cop said and we just might have a picture of it somewhere in our files he strolled round the car and returned to my window i suppose you know you are in serious trouble he said to me yes officer you won't be driving this fancy car of yours again for a very long time not after we have finished with you i hope they lock you up for a spell into a bargain you mean prison I asked alarm. Absolutely, he said, smacking his lips. So what happened was that when the policeman asked him, the hitchhiker, different questions about the employer, about his name and all, he uh, gets his answers. Whatever he gets, the answer he copies them down in the notebook, the black notebook that he had taken out, and then he says that uh, he keeps back uh, the things in his. pocket he uh, closes the button did up the button means he closes the pocket button and then you know he says that he would go to the uh, police station and find out in the files would would definitely note uh, would check for his name in the files because he did not like his face and he felt that he must have surely committed a crime and his uh, there would he would definitely get some information about this person so uh, after you know talking to him about this he goes back to the narrator's window and tells him that uh, he should know that he had he was in serious trouble and that he would not be able to drive his fancy car for a long time all right and he then he says that i am trying i will try to make sure that you are put into a lock up 
or a prison uh, so that you know uh, an un uh, a prison where it is not expected when a person would be released or would be able to come out because he did he really found it a great fault to drive the car at such a great speed and uh, in great anger you know he said he would absolutely put him into the prison he said this by smacking his lips that is by telling very very in a strict manner along with all the other criminals who break the law and a hefty fine into the bargain nobody will nobody will be more pleased about that than me i'll see you in court both of you you will be getting a summon you will be getting summons to appear he turned away and walked over to his motorcycle so you know the narrator uh, when comes to know that he would be put into prison so then uh, the policeman explains further and says that i will try to put you up into a prison where there are many criminals and uh, uh, who have broken law and then he says that even if you have to be released you will have to give a hefty fine for this and that this policeman would be very happy because he did not like the way uh, he had driven the car at such a great speed when it was not allowed and so he says that now he would go and do the needful so that the summons are sent to these two people to appear in the court then he goes back and uh, goes back to his motorcycle phew i gasp that's done it we was caught my passenger said we was caught good and proper i was caught you mean that's right he said what you going to do now governor i'm going straight up to london to talk to my solicitor i said i started the car and drove on you mustn't believe what he said to you about going to prison my passenger said i felt tremendously relieved by the way i said why did you lie to him you told him you were an unemployed hot courier but you told me that you are into highly skilled trade so am i he said but it don't pay to tell everything to a copper so what do you do i asked him so when the policeman went back to his bike the narrator gasped a sigh of relief he said phew that's done it and then he was really very upset because his name were noted and the policeman had been very furious and had assured that he would be put into prison so the passenger says we was caught you know this is a wrong english that he is speaking but it is a, a hitchhiker maybe he was not so proper he didn't know the proper language of it so maybe he spoke that way it was only because of this so then you know uh, he said uh, now what was he going to do so the narrator says that he would go straight to the london to his own lawyer and would talk about this so then the uh, hitchhiker tried to convince tried to console our narrator by saying that he should not take uh, whatever the policeman had said about putting into prison very seriously and then uh, you know but the narrator was actually very perplexed and asked him that see you you told me in the beginning that you were also into a skilled trade but in front of the policeman you said you were a hot courier so then what do you do so then uh, to which you know the hitchhiker replies that it is not necessary to tell the narrator the po policeman everything about what about himself and so you know but still the narrator wanted to know what exactly he did i've got fantastic fingers these fingers of mine he said holding up both hands high in front of him i glanced at his fingers they were so beautiful in shape so slim and long and elegant they didn't seem to belong to the rest of him at all they looked more like the fingers of a brain surgeon or a watch maker suddenly my passenger was holding up a leather belt in his hand ever seen this before he asked the belt had a brass buckle of an unusual design hey i said that's mine isn't it it is mine where did you get it he grinned and waved the belt gently from side to side where do you think i got it he said off the top of your trousers of course i reached down and felt for your belt it was gone you mean you took it off me while we have been driving along i asked flabbergasted he nodded watching me all the time uh, with those little black ratty eyes 
So you know when the narrator asked the hitchhiker as to what he did, so then he showed his fingers, the hitchhiker showed his fingers and said that he had fantastic fingers and uh, actually you know when the narrator noticed at his, looked at his fingers, he really saw that his fingers were very beautifully shaped and they were slim and long and elegant and it, be, it, it seemed to belong to a brain surgeon who does so many operations has to go deep into uh, the different uh, parts of our body body or a watchmaker who has uh, to work on very minute dial so you know he thought he really glanced at his fingers and felt so and then you know the passenger said that uh, you know then he took out uh, a belt from his pocket and he showed him he kept moving the belt in front of the narrator's eyes and showed that whether he uh, recognized the belt and the narrator exactly you know he uh, recognized his belt he felt that it was his belt and uh, so he was shocked and you know flabbergasted means he was absolutely astonished and shocked as to how could he get the hitchhiker get his belt as he was wearing it and so the hitchhiker said that he had taken them off from top of his trousers he dropped the belt on his lap and now all at once there was a brown shoelace dangling from his fingers and what about and what about this then he exclaimed waving the shoelace i glanced down at my shoes the lace of one of them was missing good grief i said how did you do that because you have got fantastic fingers exactly he cried you catch on pretty quick don't you he sat back and smiled i don't want to be late he said what what time is it i hitched up my sleeve to look at the watch on my wrist it wasn't there i looked at the man he looked back at me grinning you have taken that too i asked i said he held out his hand and there was my watch lying in his palm he placed the watch carefully on the leather tray in front of him i wouldn't nick anything from you governor he said so you know what happened was that you know as he saw the belt he kept the belt on his lap and then took out a brown shoelace so you know again our narrator recognized the shoelace and looked at his shoes and he was absolutely shocked to see that one of his uh, one of the you know shoe had a missing lace and he was absolutely uh, astonished as to how it could be done and so you know when he was just saying and he was uh, you know talking to the hitchhiker about his fantastic fingers the hitchhiker said that he did not want to be late and he had to hurry and wanted to know the time so the hitch so the narrator you know uh, he hitched up his sleeve that is you know removed his sleeve tried to move it up uh, to see the time and uh, on his wristwatch but was shocked to know that his watch was missing and again you know he uh, looked at his the hitchhiker and he found and he saw that the hitchhiker was holding his watch in his palm which later he kept on the leather tray in just in front of him and then you know he assured the hitchhiker assured a narrator that he would not take or steal or run away with anything from our narrator because he was the one who had actually given him uh, lift and here for again i had told you for governor a person who is very uh, in a great authority or you want to respect him a lot you can call him a governor or a sir you are my pal you are giving me a lift i'm glad to hear it i said all i'm doing is answering your question he went on you asked me what i did for a living and i'm showing you what else have you got of mine he smiled again and now he started to take from the pocket of his jacket one thing after another that belonged to me my driving license a key ring with four keys on it some pound notes a stubby pencil and last of all a beautiful old sapphire ring with pearls around it belonging to my wife i was taking the ring up to the jeweler in london because one of the pearls was missing so you know when the narrator asked him as to how many things what else he had you know hitched or stolen from our narrator so he took out many things from which you know all were the narrator's things that is his driving license his a uh, key ring with four keys a stubby pencil some pound notes and also the uh, sapphire ring which had some one of the pearls missing which he was taking to london to get it repaired so everything had been hitched 
uh, everything had been stolen by our hitchhiker and the narrator had not come to know. So you are a pickpocket, I said. I don't like that word, he answered. It's coarse and vulgar word. Pickpockets is coarse and vulgar people. They lift money from blind old ladies. What do you call yourself then? Me? I am a fingersmith. I am professional fingersmith. He spoke the words so solemnly and proudly as though he were telling me he was the Archbishop of Canterbury. I have never heard that word before, I said. Did you invent it? Of course I didn't invent it, he replied. It's a name given to them who's, who is risen to the very top of the profession. You have heard of a goldsmith and a silversmith, for instance. They are experts with gold and silver. I am an expert with my fingers, so I am a fingersmith. So, you know, when the narrator saw that he had stolen so many things from him, so he asked if he was a pickpocket and to which the hitchhiker said that he did not like that word. That word was very rough, coarse and vulgar because pickpockets were people who stole from anyone and uh, he, they could steal even from the blind old ladies. He said that he was a professional fingersmith. All right, and he said it so proudly as if he was calling himself the Archbishop of Canterbury. He was like so proud to be a fingersmith. And so, you know, when our narrator asked him if he had invented this word fingersmith, so then he said, no, it was uh, referred to the person who was on top of uh, uh, some particular type of profession. And so then giving examples, he said, as a gold smith is a specialist of gold, a silver smith who makes silver items and is a specialist in the same way he was expert with his fingers. And so he was a finger smith. And that's why you go to the races. Race meetings are good, he said. You just stand around after the race, watching for the lucky ones to queue up and draw their money. And when they see someone collecting a big bundle of notes, you simply follow after him and help yourself. And don't get me wrong, Governor. I never take nothing from a loser, nor from poor people neither. That's very thoughtful of you, I said. How often do you get caught? Caught? He cried, disgusted. Me get caught. It's only pickpockets get caught. Fingersmiths never. Listen, I could take the false teeth out of your mouth if I wanted to and you wouldn't even catch me. I don't have false teeth, I answered. I know you don't, he answered. Otherwise, I would have had them out long ago. I believed him. Those long slim fingers of his seemed able to do anything. We drove on for a while without talking. That policeman's going to check up on you pretty thoroughly, I said. Doesn't that worry you a bit? Nobody's checking on me, he said. Of course they are. He's got your name and address written down most carefully in his black book. The man gave me another of his sly, ratty little smiles. Ah, he said, so he has. But I'll bet he aren't got it all written down in his memory as well. So, you know, when uh, the narrator comes to know that he was his ex he had fantastic fingers and was very quick with his fingers. So then he asked, all right, that is why you go to the races. So the narrator answers that, yes, he would go there and he would wait for the lucky ones who were the winners to queue up to draw the draw up their money. And it was then, you know, when they collected the bundle of notes, it was then that the hitchhiker tried to help himself by stealing that bundle of notes. And then he uh, explained by telling uh, about himself that he never uh, stole money or anything from the loser or from poor people. So, you know, listening to this, the narrator, you know, says that he was very thoughtful. But he says that, you know, are you not afraid and how many times have you get, got caught? So he said, you know, he just smiled and he said I very proudly that he had never been caught. In fact, the fingersmiths never get caught. It was the pickpockets who used to get caught by the police. And so, you know, he said, uh, appreciating and, you know, praising himself, he said that he was so very silent and so very expert with his fingers that he could even take out false teeth from the narrator's mouth if he had any. So the narrator assured him, narrator was actually, you know, uh, 
scared that he would try to take out any teeth or anything from his mouth because he had such a lot of things of his stolen without even his knowing without even his knowledge so he then he assured that he did not have any false teeth and he uh, the narrator said that he knew he did not have because till now he would have otherwise taken them out so you know then the narrator gets reminded that the policeman had told that he would go and check uh, first this hitchhiker's uh, criminal record so you know he asked the narrator asked him whether he was afraid and he was scared because he was going to be thoroughly checked so then the hitchhiker answers that no was no one was checking on him in fact he says that i know that he had uh, noted down the, his name and address everything in the black notebook but he says that he, but i assure that he had not written down anything in his memory I've never known a copper yet with a decent memory. Some of them can't even remember their own names. What's memory got to do with it? It's written down in his book, isn't it? Yes, Governor, it is. But the trouble is, he's lost the book. He's lost both books and one with my name in it and one with yours. In the long, delicate fingers of his right hand, the man was holding up in triumph the two books he had taken from the policeman's pocket. Easiest job I, I have ever done, he announced proudly. I nearly sweared the car into a milk truck. I was so excited. So, you know, it happens that, you know, uh, when he says that, I know he had noted down my name and everything, the address and all in the black notebook, but he had, uh, but the policeman had not noted anything in his brain. And then he says, I, uh, he has seen many policemen, many cops. Copper here means for a policeman. He says, I have known many policemen, but I have known none who had a very good memory. So then, you know, he says that uh, the narrator is again shocked and he says, what does memory got to do with this? So then the hitchhiker tells that um, the trouble is that he has lost both the books. The policeman has lost both the books, uh, the book, which the black notebook on which he had written uh, the hitchhiker's name and address and the other notebook, the book of tickets that on which he had written uh, the narrator's uh, things. And then in his delicate fingers, uh, he had both the books in his hand and this and he says that this was the easiest job that he had done by stealing these two books. Uh, from the policeman's pocket without the knowledge of a policeman and so he was so very good at his job and he was an expert fingersmith so you know when the narrator saw this and saw the two books he was so very flabbergasted and shocked that he nearly you know was uh, going to collide his car was going to collide with the milk truck he was so very excited let's see the end that copper's got nothing on either of us now he said you are a genius i cried he's got no names no address no car number no nothing he said you are brilliant i think you'd better pull off this main road as soon as possible he said then we would better build a little bonfire and burn these books you are fantastic fellow i exclaimed thank you governor he said it's always nice to be appreciated so you know when our narrator came to know uh, that he had stolen both the chalan book and the uh, small black notebook he was actually very shocked and excited and then he praised our hitchhiker by calling him a genius a brilliant and a fantastic fellow and uh, you know even uh, the hitchhiker was very happy that he was being appreciated and praised and in fact he even suggested that they should uh, go to one corner and build a bonfire and burn the two books and we can see in the picture that in fact you know later on just after this they must have burned those books and removed all evidence that was which with them wasn't this an interesting chapter just imagine the way he had stolen so many things the belt and the shoelace was actually really shocking and without the knowledge of the narrator so this was the chapter you need to know all the details uh, 
you know go through it once more and everything would be very clear the appearance of the car the appearance of the hitchhiker please go through them once and uh, the, his name was michael fish he was a hot carrier who actually is a hot carrier everything please go through the whole video once again and if you have any doubts then please put it in the comment section if you have still not subscribed my channel please press the subscribe button and even the bell icon for the latest notifications do take good care of yourself bye bye